how many distinct permutations are there of the letters in the word algebra, okay? So what we wanna do when we talk about permutations is how many different ways can we rearrange those letters so that we can get a different word, okay, using all the letters. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do that on your own. But what I would do if I was tackling this problem is I would think about, you know, how many letters are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters, okay? Now when you order objects, okay, you can think about this formula, n factorial. And what the factorial means is that you take whatever this n value is, which in this case it's seven since there's seven letters, and you multiply down to one. And the reason we're doing that is because, you know, if you look at the seven letters in the word algebra, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, how many choices are there for this first letter? Well, there's seven, right? If you put them in a hat and you mix them up, how many ways could you pick a letter? Well, there'd be seven different uh, letters in that hat that you could pick out, right? But then once you pick, pick that letter out, that first one, how many are there gonna be for the second grab, right? Well, there's gonna be six, and then after that, there's gonna be five, four, three, two, one, right? And so what we're doing is we're multiplying those together to find out the total number of you know, ways that you could draw out these seven letters. The only problem though is that you see how there's two A's, okay, in algebra? So if I was to put the A over here and over here, or switch them, it would still look like the same word, algebra, right? So what we have to do is we have to divide out two factorial because there's two ways of placing those A's and you wouldn't really realize that it's a different word. So we have to divide out those multiplicities or those duplicates. So that's how you would do that problem. Now I'll just give you another example similar to this one in case you want to see a more general example. Uh, say for example, we took the word Mississippi. Okay, this is a common example. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 there's 11 letters here. So there's gonna be 11 factorial different ways of arranging those letters, right? 11, 10, 9, 8, all the way down to one. But notice how we have four S's. So we're gonna divide out four factorial. We've got two P's, we're gonna divide out two factorial. And we have four I's, so we're gonna divide out four factorial. And again, the reason that we're doing this is because four times three times two times one is actually 24. And there's 24 different ways that you could rearrange those S's. So for example, if I was to put like S here, S here, like kind of rearrange them, but keep them in these same four places, right? Move them around. It would still look like the word Mississippi. So what we want to do is we want to divide out those duplicates or multiple, multiples, you would say. All right. So that's uh, question number one, definitely something uh, helpful uh, to remember. So let's go to number two. This one says solve for X and they give us this equation, okay? So what do you think? Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do this one on your own. We've got four to the two X minus three equals one sixteenth to the X power. All right, so you might be thinking logarithms, you might be thinking you know, rules of exponents, different things might be going through your mind right now, but I'll show you the key in this problem and that's to get the same base on both sides of the equation. So in this case, when we look at four and we look at one sixteenth, what do they have in common? Well. We can do this a couple different ways, but 1 16th is really like four to the negative two. Okay, now why negative? Well, four squared is 16, but that negative exponent tells us to take the reciprocal, flip it over, right? So that's how we get the 1 16th, and it's all raised to the x power. Now, when you have a power to a power, what do you do? You multiply. So you might wanna review your rules of exponents if some of this seems challenging to you, but they definitely test you on uh, exponent rules on the ACT. So now the four to the two X minus three, I'm just gonna bring that down on the left side of our equation, okay? Now notice what we've got here. We've got base four, base four, right? They have the same base. So if the bases are the same, what we can do is we can set those exponents equal to one another. So the only way the left side and the right side are gonna be equal if the bases are the same is if the powers are the same. So let's go ahead and solve this equation now. 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 2x. Uh, let's see, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation, right? So we've got negative 3 equals negative 4x. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4, right? So x is equal to 3 fourths. So that's the answer to that problem. And again, you know, with the ACT, it's multiple choice. So you can always take, you know, A, B, C, D, E, the, the multiple choice answers put them in and check. It's just that some of these problems are gonna be easier if you just know the techniques that I'm showing you here than having to back substitute and try to uh, check each individual choice. So that's one, two, we've got one more example, but before we jump into that last example, if you're preparing for the ACT 
and you want additional help, you like the way that I teach, my teaching style and so forth, I've got a huge ACT math review video course that goes through 65 concepts uh, that are important to know for the ACT. We go through a number of examples. A lot of students have taken the courses already and reported back that they've been very helpful and I'm sure it'll help you too. So go ahead and check out those courses. Let's get into the last example. Number three, it says, which of the following is equivalent to 36X squared plus 25? So you can see I've written down a few multiple choice answers. And again, you know, your option is always to work backwards. You know, you could multiply these together and see which one of these uh, works. So maybe we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, some of these just to see how that would be. So for the first one, you can see this is a binomial times a binomial. And if you recognize this, this is a, a sum and difference pattern, right? You're adding and subtracting, but the terms are the same. So there's a shortcut to this, but we'll just do the distributive property. So distribute. That's going to give us what? 36x squared. This is going to give us plus 30x. And then when we distribute the negative 5, we get uh, negative 30x, right? And negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. So you can see those are canceling, and we're left with 36x squared minus 25, not plus 25, right? So we're close, but not quite there, right? Okay, let's look at letter B. So for letter B, same idea. I'm going to take 6x times 6x, which is 36x squared. 6x times 5y, uh, 5i, I'm sorry, is a 30ix. Uh, and then the inside gives us negative 30ix, right? And then the last and the last gives us negative 25i squared. Now remember, on the ACT, there's oftentimes an imaginary question or complex number type question, a, a, num, a question involving i. And remember, i represents what? the square root of negative one, i squared is equal to negative one. So these are two things that you wanna know and memorize for the ACT. So i squared is negative one. So if I put in negative one for i squared here, that's a negative one times a negative 25, which those two negatives are gonna cancel and give us a positive 25. The 30ix and negative 30ix cancel, so you can see we're getting 36x squared plus 25. You can see we've got a match, and so it's gonna be letter B. But I wanna just show you something real quick here about factoring a sum of two squares. We learned about how to factor a difference of two squares, and that's definitely important for the ACT. Remember, uh, a squared minus b squared, we factor this as a plus b, a minus b, right? But if we've got a squared plus b squared, we factor it like this, a plus bi times a minus bi. And you can verify that by foiling this out or doing the distributive property twice, and you'll see that you get back the original here. But either case, like I said, you can work backwards, but sometimes it's good to know these little shortcuts about, in this case, factoring a sum of two squares. So I hope this video really helps you to get a few more questions right on the ACT. Again, check out that course. I think that'll really help you. And I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.